We're live. We're live. Okay. The first person who comes in, I want to know how is the audio? The audio should be good. Should be better than the last live stream that I did. But today, I want to talk to you about an emergency, right? And this is because I've seen a lot of my clients, uh, some of the guys in the community, and some of the clients that I've uh, been working with on on my twelve week program as well have been feeling a sense of kind of burn, like they're grinding their head against the wall with cold approach. And actually, in some cases, it can become a little bit destabilizing to their actual identity. Like the way they think about themselves, the way they feel as a person can become kind of destabilizing. So if you go to work, and then afterwards you go out for two hours and you talk to a lot of strangers, and then you go home and cook some food and go to bed or go to the gym, and it is it can be very destabilizing so what i want to talk to you guys about today is how we can create a really strong identity while still actively pursuing new opportunities and this is really important because when you look at the research on identity building when we've evolved well we have evolved from uh, tribal communities in which you would have a role within that group or within that tribe right you were x person you formed an identity and that was important to how you see yourself as useful within that group or community now we don't have those communities in some senses we don't physically need those communities anymore and so our identity is something that is a lot more fluid and flexible which in some ways is a good thing because it means we can redefine ourselves we can grow out of that role into a greater role we can climb up the ranks but in another sense it can be very destabilizing when it comes to thinking about our long-term goals and our vision and how we want to manifest ourselves in the world and feeling that deep sense of security. I am this person. I have, you know, I have this sense of humor. This is the way that I actually show up and manifest myself. So just before I get into it, anyone watching right now, please comment too much background noise. Okay, how annoying is it, uh, Sniper Jordan? Is the audio quality all right? They're playing some loud music, which is a bit annoying. But I might see if I can actually move over. Watch this. I'm moving. I'm moving. We're going to get the right audio. Stay with me. That's good. That's where we are. These are fun. We're in a private. We're in a private. Here, we're only going to get the sound of trains whizzing past, but that should be there. Okay, there we are. So, we came from tribal communities in which it was important to form an identity to establish ourselves as a member in that tribe. We had a fixed role. Nowadays, we don't have those communities. And so our identity is much more fluid and flexible, which is good. Because if you don't like the city or town or country you're from, you can go away and build yourself up in a different place. We can essentially ascend our role. We can reaffirm who we are in a new context with a new group, do new things and sort of recreate our identity. And that's what a lot of you guys are doing now, right? It's about saying, I was born a certain way, maybe I'm more introverted, maybe my social skills suck, maybe I always thought I was bad with women, like I did. And then you go out and you work at it and you learn and you apply yourself and you become stronger and you become more resilient and you realize that you are not who you thought you were. You can be so much more. So now we don't live in those tribes, we have flexible identities. But what do you think? Everything in life has uh, the, the pros and the cons, right? You have a lot of sex, it's fun. You meet loads of women, cool, that's fun. What are the negatives? Well, you become pickier, it becomes harder to find long-term relationships. Everything in, in life has a sort of give and a take, a swing, right? Now, now that we have these fluid identities, what we risk, what we lose is actually stability and psychological stability. And that's why you see so often for guys that go too far into let's say day game and pick up artistry, they end up giving their life to that and thinking that that's the one true answer to all of their problems. And they don't actually build themselves in other areas. They don't build a strong tribe. They don't go to the gym. They don't 
uh, fight a martial art. They don't read up on other topics uh, that they don't focus on a bigger mission and a bigger vision. These guys become very destabilized because they can talk to women, but they don't really have anything else. And every woman is giving them different feedback, right? That's the important thing. When you go out in the day, one woman, woman might respond really well, really appreciate it and treat you like you are a worthy individual. And another woman might treat you like the dirt on the end of her shoe. And that's destabilizing, right? However much you want to ignore external validation, we've evolved to be actually very perceptive to external validation because in our tribal times, that's how we navigated right action. Okay, the group doesn't like the way I'm behaving. I'm talking too much. They're getting annoyed by me. I'm not going to talk as much, right? Or I'm not talking enough and I'm not getting anything done and no one's listening to me. So I need to speak up. I need to speak up. My, if one of my videos, if this video is you guys say, it's, it's terrible, Sam, you're talking nonsense, it's rubbish. It would be nice to say, oh, I don't care what people think, but of course I'm going to listen to you guys, right? Of course I'm going to pay attention to what you say. So the destabilizing aspect of cold approach is that we're constantly getting different feedback on who we are. And what a community does is provide you with that stability of identity. Say like, oh, no, I know how I am. I know I'm good, right? I know what I'm capable of. These guys see me this way. This is my identity. So we need that balance, right? This is the kicker. And I don't want this to be a long video. I want to keep it short, short and snappy, but it is an emergency. It's so important. So many of my guys are dealing with this at the moment. If you are going out and spending all of your social time, all of the hours that you have available where you're not working, you're not going to the gym, you're not eating, sleeping, doing everything else. If you're spending all of that time going out and cold approaching, you are going to face this issue. There are no exceptions, really. What I'm getting all of my guys to do now is to think of it as literally a 50-50 split. So let's say I've got four hours free, five hours free. Two and a half of those hours, I'm going to spend going out and meeting new people. Let's call it networking rather than day game because um, I think that it's a much more useful framework for this because you might be meeting girls who could be much more than just a partner. If she's not a partner, could she be? Uh, could you bring her to a club or an event? Could she be good for one of your other friends? Could you, you know, thinking about it as curiosity to learn about others is more on the networking side so let's call it networking on, on the one side and then establishing groups tribes communities on the other side two and a half hours of your time goes towards let's say cold approach networking becoming curious about new individuals learning about them seeing if they have a place in your life right seeing if they have a place on the journey that you're taking the other half of your time if you're not doing this already Go to events and classes. That's it, right? I've got a gym across, just across the water from me uh, in Canary Wharf, and they run classes all the time. And I go to the gym, and I started attending the classes because I like meeting new people and doing new things. Martial arts classes, boxing classes, strength classes, calisthenics classes, yoga classes, and you meet all this variety of different people. And the women in those environments are going to take you so much more seriously as a potential partner especially, and this is the important thing, if you're a guy that's built up your communication skills through cold approach. So for you guys watching that have been out in the street, talk, street, talking to women, facing your fears, fighting your demons, doing what's challenging and knowing that you're building yourself and growing. If you take that skill set and that mindset into an easy social environment where you're literally provided with people around you that you can meet, right? You're doing a calisthenic class. One of the girls is using the rings. You're like, damn, that's really impressive. I haven't seen Honestly, I haven't seen any girls that were able to use the rings yet. Are you a gymnast? How did you get involved? How did you learn this? Talk to her. You don't need to ask for a number. You don't need to ask her out. You're going to come back to the class. You're going to see her in the gym. You are building a community. Much like instead of, if we think about it like a social garden, which I encourage you to do, instead of investing all of your time and attention into one rose that you're growing, and this is the one important rose, right? putting all of your water, all of the food into this one rose. Treat it like a garden. You've got eight or nine, 10, 20 roses growing. You give them all a bit of food and all a bit of water. Three of them die, that's okay. You've got 17 left, right? You spread yourself across different events, different communities, different social situations where you have the opportunity to communicate from the same level. Instead of that immediate frame with cold approach where it's like, okay, first two seconds, you are going up to her. You are chasing her. There is no challenge for her. Now you can very often flip that dynamic and make it feel like, you know, 
you're actually screening her and assessing her as to whether she'd be a good partner. But for that first couple of seconds, you are, there is a frame of you being the person that is coming to her, chasing her, wanting something from her. And you have to work very hard to reverse that narrative sometimes. And sometimes it, it's, it's almost impossible to do that. In these social environments, so far you are equal. She is there doing the exercises, you are there doing the exercises, right? It's an environment with greater intimacy, an environment where you're coming together on the same page. And when you make connections in these environments and you continue coming back, you can talk to her again the next time. You can get to know her a little bit better. You can get to know her friends. You can go out for drinks together. And then from that group, you can form relationships or not, or you can just have a cool group to go out with and have fun with. But in these environments, when you ask women, how did you meet your boyfriend? How do you meet your ex-boyfriend? Whether they tell the truth or whether they're lying about it, because many people say, oh, we met through friends, but really they met on Tinder. When you ask the question, women want to say that they met through friends, right? Now, a few women would, would, would be really proud to say they met their guy through cold approach, but the honest truth is that there are a lot of women out there who are just basically closed off to cold approach. They believe that the types of guys that approach them are not the types of guys that they're going to go for, right? Not all of them, clearly. All of my, virtually all of my ex-girlfriends came through cold approach. But you are fighting against the tide. And you guys know this, right? It's not the easiest way uh, to meet women. It requires a lot of um, approaches, which can be fun, but it requires a lot of work for the return. Now, if you meet them in these environments, it requires much less because the narrative, the story that women tell themselves when they've met their partner through friends or through uh, some intimate event, some exhibition, some dinner party they were at, some event that one of their friends organized and you came and her friends came and you guys all talking and then you started forming a bit of chemistry and then you took her out, your, your potential to find a good partner or a good woman is so far increased when you meet her through these social events, right? And the cold approach is the perfect training ground to be confident in those environments. When I go to my gym, you know, I might go to a martial arts class and there's, there's actually a lot of women go there as well. And I see the guys like looking at the girls. They don't, they don't know what to do. They don't know what to say. They look at her across the room. At the end, they go and like stand next to her and they want to find a way into the conversation, but they don't know. And when I walk in, it's like, hey, how are you doing? You coming to jiu-jitsu? No. Why? You said you would last week. And she's like, no, I didn't. I'm like, yes, you did. We're not talking anymore. Right? And she giggles and walks away. And I see her next week or not. It doesn't matter to me because it's okay. There's many options. There's many people. And I'm not trying to get anything out of her. Right? I'm not trying to date these women. I just want to get to know them. I'm just having fun. I'm talking to everyone. I'm building uh, social energy in this easy environment and it massively increases the opportunities you have and it allows you to fix that more stable identity where you are being treated like an equal member of that group right because she chose to go there you chose to go there it's spontaneous you're in the same environment it's organic it's old-fashioned to some extent and it fits with the narrative of how she would potentially want to meet her partner so to summarize that as quickly as possible, it's good that we've got the freedom to have a flexible identity and move forward in the world without the limitations of our tribe, our social status within a tribe. We can move to another tribe and build it up in a different way. However, we lose something because we lose that sense of I am this person, I have these values, this is my role, this is my utility, this is my purpose that we once had in the tribal setting, right? So we need to reestablish that fixed identity, that security of identity from the tribal setting in the modern world. And the way to do that is, introduce, is to introduce yourself to new communities, new social events, getting out of the house and joining a boxing class, right? Joining a martial arts class, joining a yoga class, joining a strength class at another gym. There's an app called Class Pass where you can find different community groups, different social groups, different events, that you can show up for a class, right? You pay a monthly subscription and you can sign up to classes. Now it's all very well you listening and saying, oh, that makes sense. Why are you not doing it, right? I know a lot of you guys will be, but I'm talking to the guys that will hear this and then just go back and say, yeah, that makes sense. Sam taught me about identity, but uh, you know, just gonna go do my cold approach. No, 
what are you doing tomorrow morning, right? Are you going to the gym by yourself? Are you going to go and lift some weights? Or is there a class at the gym that you could go and join, potentially meet new interesting people, potentially meet beautiful women, at least put yourself in an opportunity, uh, an environment where there will be an opportunity for you to meet an interesting woman or potentially valuable and, and helpful connections. Why are you not doing this, right? So the call to action here is for you guys to say, right, what is going on around me? Is there a fitness first near me? Is there a third space near me? Is there a pure gym near me? Is there a hybrid fitness near me? What are they offering? What are the classes, right? Oh, it's 56 pounds a month and I've already got a subscription. It's 56 pounds a month. Come on, guys. Like this is bigger, right? This is bigger. You can meet your next business partner there. You can meet the mother of your potential children there. Like think bigger, sign up to it, go to the classes, figure out if there are people there. If you don't like it, cancel the membership. But these spaces, the gym, a specific art exhibition, a very good art gallery, uh, a conference on something that you're interested in, uh, a meditation session somewhere in London, uh, some flea market somewhere else, a food market in Chelsea, all of these environments are giving you a sense of spontaneity. You're going there and you just happen to be there at the same time and you saw her and you went over and you talked and you were talking about marmalade at a food market and it just happened. That's what you want and that's what she wants. Isn't that what you're preparing for? Isn't that what Cold Approach is about? It's about saying, when I'm building this resilience, now that I've built the ability to go up and communicate with people in any environment, when I find myself in the right environment with the right people, I know what the fuck I'm doing. I'm good to go. I'm ready. I've prepared for this. I'm a social human. I have communication skills. I'm good to go. The primary benefit of cold approach is not finding a partner. The likelihood of you finding your life partner in the street is slim. But with cold approach, everywhere that you travel, every country you go to, every new city you live in, every friend that you go to visit, you open up opportunities from the moment you arrive at the airport to the moment you return home. You have prepared yourself psychologically and socially to meet the types of people that you want. So this is now about saying however much approaching you've done, whether it's a lot or a little or none at all. Yes, go and learn, go and increase your ability, go and improve yourself. But remember that there are environments where the likelihood and the possibilities for you to meet the types of women you're interested in are massively increased. And those are the environments that all of this practice, all of this training is going to serve you the best. Only when you enter these new environments do you really see the ways in which you've improved, right? It wasn't until I traveled. It wasn't until I found myself in, you know, barbecues and social situations after my first couple of years of cold approaching that I realized, like, how powerfully it had changed me as a person. Your charisma is up, your charm is up, your ability to speak spontaneously on the fly and build connections quickly with people is so improved once you've developed this skill set. So aside from the call to action telling you guys to literally go ahead and just book three to four classes for next week, just literally do it now. If you need to stop this broadcast to go on your phone or computer and say, what am I going to do? I'm going to do a Muay Thai class, a boxing class, a yoga class, and um, high intensity interval training class. I'm going to do those four. If you need to stop this, go and do that and do it because this is so, so beneficial. The second call to action is the community that I'm actually building that some of you guys watching have already joined. Welcome to those uh, that have, and I look forward to welcoming those that haven't that are interested of the guys that watch this channel that are actually taking action, that are ambitious, that are moving in the right direction, that are hungry for more, and that understand the holistic balance of the health, wealth, love. What is your mission? What are your values? Are you moving in the direction of your mission and filtering your daily actions and behaviors through your values? Are you focusing on your health? Are you training? Are you physically active? Are you fighting? And have you got a tribe? Have you got a social circle? Have you got uh, women that you can meet, that you like, that you could potentially form deep and personal connections with? This community is about keeping you guys accountable to each area of your life. And I built an entire strategy and framework to do that. So you know how to contact me. My link's in every description. Book a call with me or send me an email at admin at 
if you're interested in joining the group because it's going to be amazing, right? I've got loads of guys involved. I've got accountability coaches. I've got my Brazilian jiu-jitsu instructor. And we've got a community of really, really ambitious and interesting guys. So I'm, I'm looking forward to that. I am going to answer questions from you guys now that I've explained my spiel. So, okay. Went out this weekend and lost count of how many guys I spoke to. Friends coming up to me asking me how to teach them. Yep, awesome, man. That's great. Congratulations. But remember to balance that, right? It's not enough to just be cold approaching. You might be able to get on a date with a woman if you just learn to communicate well or if you just get lucky. But keeping a woman is a different game altogether. And she is going to be looking, she is going to be screening you right from the start on whether you have the type of values as a man that she's going to be interested in. And honestly, if you're not working on all of these areas together, there's just no incentive for the type of women that you guys are going to be interested in, in staying with you. And if you're just having these casual relationships, these one night stands, I promise you it's not going to fulfill you for a long time because um, Tusk and I a long time ago came up with the, the trifecta, the very crudely named trifecta of the chase, the bang and the snuggles, which is essentially we need to feel some sense that it was us that won her over, that we made it happen, that we had agency in winning this particular woman over. And then obviously the physical and sexual connection, the bang and the snuggles, the emotional connection afterwards, some sense of tenderness, of femininity, of, of, of care past the point of sex. And if any one of those are missing, the whole experience does not feel complete and satisfying. So I, I do think that for any guys that are just thinking about this as just a romp into hedonism, as just let's see if we can bang as many girls as possible. Maybe that's going to be good for you for a couple of months, but really it's only going to be good to the extent that you realize that it's ultimately unfulfilling and there is a better path and forming real connections with amazing women that actually like you and aren't just thinking of you as a, you know, another, 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 you know, hedonistic experience. Um, there's a lot more in store for you if you're at that stage of just wanting to have sex. Uh, what earbuds am I using? They're called Beats Studio, Beats Studio Buds. They're, they're not that great, to be honest. I had the Beats Pros before, which wrap around the ear. They're more comfortable, they're better for guys, and the microphone's better. These ones are not very good. So don't buy them. I don't recommend. Do you have any tip on what to do if you can get lazy easy but can't get past the two or three month mark and get them in a relationship? Hi, Juliet. Um, yeah, if it's easy for you, I don't know. I, I feel like I'm talking to a woman if your name is Juliet, but that's rather rare for me. So I'm going to say it from a man's perspective and then a woman's perspective. If you're a guy and you can get laid easily, but you can't be in a relationship, what you've done is you've built your social skills and your communication skills and your idealized image, the, pre the way you present yourself to a higher level than the level at which you actually perform on a day-to-day -day basis. So again, the solution to keeping a woman is a very different solution to the one of getting a woman or getting laid. It's actually relatively easy um, if you dress well, if you look after yourself, if you groom yourself well, and if you focus on your communication skills to get laid, but the problem comes after that, that women realize that you actually have nothing to, to offer them, right? And I'm not saying that you need to work to get a woman's approval because they also need to have something to offer you. And this is a problem on both, for both genders of women ha having all these expectations of men and actually providing very little and men having all of these expectations of women and providing very little as well. If you struggle to get a woman into a relationship, then the issue is that she is screening you for indicators that you are valuable as a potential part of her life, as a potential partner, as someone to move forward with. And if you haven't built your life, again, in the areas of wealth, health, and love, wealth, both your financial security and your potential to build wealth, and your self-belief that you will be able to, to build, like, let's say, status, power, wealth, your health, meaning your physical exercise, martial arts, and your mental health, um, meditation and some sort of spiritual practice, even religion in many cases, is actually very helpful um, if you are trying to uh, uh, work on your emotional stability and emotional health and your love, your social, familial and romantic, which is what we're talking about predominantly in these videos, 
because that's the niche that I buried myself in early on. Um, so that's from a man's perspective. If you're not getting the relationships, it's either something that you need to work on yourself in terms of you actually not being open to receiving her affection. Very often as guys, we have some abandonment issues whereby we don't even believe that we're worthy of love. So you build up a persona uh, that acts as a sort of um, a funnel for that love. And then you say, well, if she knew who or how I really was, then she wouldn't love me. And then she's giving all this attention, but you're not receiving it. And so it falls on deaf ears. And th- I mean, that's a lot deeper and that's more for a therapist to go over. But the other thing is that you actually haven't built your value up to the level of the presentation of your value. So you're presenting something that isn't actually congruent with the reality underneath. From a woman's perspective, it's very easy for you to get laid. If this is really Juliet, uh, the woman, if you can get laid easy but can't get past the two or three month mark, it, it, that's, I mean, that's the perpetual problem for a woman, right? If it's easy for you to get laid with them, it's, it's, it is easy for you to get laid with a man. Right. I, I, if you put yourself in environments where there are men in nightclubs, in Covent Garden, um, in in virtually any environment where there's a high population of men, single men, let's say, it's incredibly easy for women to to get laid. And that's why men don't value so highly a woman that's had a lot of past sexual relationships, because it indicates to them that she is not selective and she doesn't value her own sexuality. Right something that she has that is, um, I suppose, really biologically valuable, she is not valuing it. She's giving it to everyone. So why would he want to be the guy, right? If everyone, if everyone could get a Rolex for a tenner, no one would want a Rolex, right? We, we look for things that, that, that have value. And for women, protecting your sexuality and allowing him to feel special that he's one of the few guys that was actually able to win you over whether it's moral or not, whether we like it or not, that, that the data clearly says, says that men prefer women who are selective about who they give it to. So it's a little aside, but in terms of getting him in a relationship, well, the way to do it is to show him that it's about him and no one else. A lot of men, when they feel like they're just put in this box, is like, oh, you know, she, she, she wants a relationship and I'm just the guy for the moment. He doesn't feel that sense of real devotion from the woman, but it's about him personally, him and his masculinity and his identity and who he is. If you don't make him feel like that, like it's about him and not about your conception of what a guy should be in a relationship and he's just some estimation of that, then he's not gonna stick around because he doesn't feel special, he doesn't feel empowered and he doesn't feel masculine. So the way to get a man and keep him is uh, not to sleep, personally, I think not to sleep with him too early right, to to show that it actually takes some work to win you over, but to allow him to win you over completely and then to support him as a man, to support his masculinity, to support his goals and to be the woman in the relationship, right, to be, to allow him to dominate you to some extent. And I don't mean in the, I don't mean in the sense of like, let him abuse you or hurt you. I mean, in the sense, let him be how a man wants to be let him let him take the lead right allow him to feel masculine i think if you're a woman who takes care of herself and you meet a man and you do those things right you support him you show devotion to him and you let him take the lead uh to support him and his masculinity he's going nowhere it's actually not hard to keep that. why wouldn't they want a relationship with someone it's a cold approach um A lot of them do, right? Some women do want a relationship with a guy from Cold Approach. As I said, most of my past relationships, I would say upwards of 75, 80% have been from Cold Approach. But as as we discussed, there is this element of narrative. The first thing is that many women believe that if you approached her in the street, you've probably approached loads of other women on the street and it doesn't make her feel special. And to some women, they immediately associate the action with, um, a lack of sort of sexual emotional control, like you are still um, an immature guy in the stage of your life where you're just trying to have as much sex as possible because you need validation of your ego. And even when that's not true, I'm sure most of you guys watching this, that's not the case. You're past that stage of just needing to validate your ego by getting sex from women. 
but women strongly associate it. They say, well, look, if he's approached me like this, he's probably approached, approached hundreds of other women like this, which means that he doesn't have a lot of natural options. He doesn't have women in his environment. He doesn't have women coming to him. So it's probably not the type of guy I'm going to go for. Plus the fact that most guys that cold approach are doing it horribly. So she already has a preset frame in her mind that since most of the guys that approach her aren't her type, why would this guy be any different? Right. So that's, um, that's one reason. Um, but the other reason is that the, as we said, the narrative is so important. And when I ask women, which I have a lot, how do you want to meet your future husband or how did you meet your ex-boyfriend? They all say, oh, we met through friends, right? They had a social group or mutual friends who are, who established that tribal sense of like, these guys are safe. These guys are on my level. We're a community. We're a group. And that's how I want to meet my partner. There's something intrinsic in us that, that we want to be connected by a tribe or a group. So by using the skills, again, by using the skills that you develop through cold approach and applying that in a group setting, you are getting the best of both worlds. You're training yourself for any environment, and then you're employing the skills that you've learned in specific environments. So that's good. One needs to meet new people all the time. One does. I agree. You, the social muscle is a muscle that you have to flex all the time. The good thing about it is very much like a muscle, it's muscle memory. So once you have built these skills, if you take a week or two off, or even longer, it comes back quickly. Maybe difficult at the start, but it comes back quickly. It, you are improving yourself if you are honestly and authentically approaching women. If you're just learning a structure and like trying to think of the right thing to say, you're really not learning that much because part of what you're learning is to be charismatic and charisma comes from spontaneity impulsiveness and creativity it's like the person who's able to say the, the punchline at the right time or to engage with the comedic impulse impulse at the right time so authentically cold approaching trains uh trains that muscle just repeating a script that you learned from some guy on youtube is not going to be particularly helpful unfortunately though it will be helpful to the extent that you are still going up and facing a fear. You are dialing down or muting the intensity of the experience by having like a stock script in mind or things that you usually do. So I think it's good to constantly think about what are some crutches that I'm relying on? What are some, what are some shit that I'm saying that I keep saying it's not actually working? And then to change it and to remember to just focus all of your attention on the person you're talking with and actively listen to them and actively pay attention to them, that is training. That is really training the skill set. If it's a girl or a guy that you approach and you say some things, nice things, then they know you're a good guy and women will actually love and respect you for it to take force to do it. Yeah, I agree. The right women will respect it. If you approach honestly, even if you're a bit nervous, the right women will respect it. And that's what that's what's important. You don't need to pay attention to the opinions of fools, right? And that's really important in so many domains. Who are the women that you're looking for? What is the type of woman that you like? And what does she think about you honestly, authentically approaching her with no bullshit and no performative aspect? That's the question you've got to ask, right? Not what do women think? But what are the women that you actually care about think? Why is the flake rate so high in cold approach? I've had some of the best interactions from cold approach. I've even taken a girl home from it, but for whatever reason, I don't see them again. It's because it takes time to form a connection with someone, right? And again, this is why I think going to these community events and, and groups and, and classes is so good. It's because it, give, it gives you a way to actually form a connection over time, right? If I went to martial arts class, saw a girl fighting at the end, talked to her, said, hey, do you want to go grab a drink later or can I get your number? It's probably not going anywhere, to be honest, because I haven't screened her and she knows that I haven't screened her. She knows that I don't know anything about her. She knows that there is actually no connection there right now. Whereas if I talk to her a little bit and then say, hey, I'll see you later, walk away, go away. She's like, oh, he didn't need anything from me. You know, he doesn't know me yet. He can afford to walk away. You come back the next session, you get to know her a bit better. After a while, you spent two to three hours with her at different moments and the passage of time between those moments actually enhances the sense that we know someone, right? 
that's a, an interesting psychological effect. If you met a woman three times, but you met her on three different occasions over three months, you feel like you've known her a lot better than if you just knew her for three hours in one day and she feels the same. But the reason why the flake rate is so high is because you simply don't have enough time to get to know her and form that connection. And when she walks away and has time to reflect on the experience, it's like, wait a second, do I want to see this guy? That was just some random dude that I know nothing about that like came up and approached me. And he probably approached a thousand other women as well. And I don't know if it's safe and I don't know who he is. And, you know, and if I value myself, I don't want to give myself away too easily. And besides, there's plenty of other guys in my jiu-jitsu class who I know better, who I have a connection with, who I'm getting to know, who I can say that I met through friends, right? So it's all linked. Can you get a girlfriend from cold approach or is online dating better or meeting at a gym class or boxing? Those are three completely different things. Online dating is terrible way. It's a terrible, terrible way to meet a partner. Reason being, there's absolutely nothing exciting or interesting or demanding or, 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 or challenging about swiping left and right on an app. She feels degraded by the process. We feel degraded by the process. We know that it's just another date, right? Everyone's just trying to get a date. Uh, they follow the same pattern. It's, it is the matrix, right? If we're gonna use that terminology, it is the matrix. It's like a corporation has got together because people suck at conversation and they found a way to take communication and conversation out of the equation so that they can make money out of your data. And you've said, oh, I need help with this. I'm bad at conversation. So I'm going to use the date nuts and, and go on more dates. Then the restaurants get booked out by clueless guys who haven't actually faced any challenge, talking to women who could go on 100 different dates, but just pick this one. And her expectations are incredibly, insanely high. It, it just doesn't work for the vast majority of people. After that, you've got cold approach. Yes, you can meet, meet a girlfriend. I've met girlfriends. I mean, and I mean girlfriends in the literal sense. I've been in monogamous relationships with women that I met in the street. And the majority of women that I date are from the street because I approach quite a lot and I'm quite good at it. And a lot of the videos you see on my channel actually, well, are always not the ones that went really well because I wouldn't obviously post a video of a girl that I'm dating, right? So the videos you see are either girls that I decided not to date or where it didn't go anywhere, right? In the vast majority of cases. So uh, cold approach, yes, you can, but I don't think that's its primary function. I think its primary function is A, developing our social skills so that we can communicate better in any other environment. And B, and B, it's to engage with a real sense of challenge in our everyday life. The vast majority of us are not fighting in a war. The vast majority of us actually have zero opportunities to do something we are deeply afraid of doing and have a fundamental biological fear of and overcome it and win and feel the satisfaction of winning. Cold approach is the most direct way to engage with challenge, to face our demons, to face our fears, to become an agent and an actor in our own lives, to actually do, to be the cause point. So those are the two greatest effects. And after that, you could argue that it's potentially meeting a partner, but it's, it's, it's much more personal. The real benefits of cold approach are much more personal and uh, really developing your communication skills for other environments. If you don't put yourself in those other environments, you're missing the point. Let's see what he's saying. Popular loner. What up, Sam? What up, Navi? I did some cold approach yesterday. I didn't use the London day game model like a robot and had more success. I got two solid numbers and a date for the 28th of October. Congratulations, brother. That's awesome. Um, you might even find, I mean, that's great in your case. A lot of you guys might find that if you were using some sort of model or following some script, that it actually is harder at the start when you go out and don't have anything to say. But again, it's supposed to be. And you showing up and having literally nothing to say and getting awkwardly blown out is not a negative experience, right? If you ever want to read a book that's going to change your perspective, Anti-Fragile is one of those books. Um, and Anti-Fragile is essentially the idea that we talk about things like post-traumatic stress disorder, how bad things in our life can affect us negatively, but no one thinks to study how uh, trauma can actually affect us positively. And if you engage with the mindset of, you know, what is difficult makes me stronger, 
right? Like a tree that's blown on one side and the fibers grow stronger on that side and it becomes more resilient, that tree is anti-fragile. A glass is fragile, a tree is anti-fragile, and a block of aluminium is durable because it doesn't grow from being thrown about, nor does it die from being thrown about. It stays the same. But a tree, the more blown about it gets, the stronger the fibers are built. And a human being, a man who's on his mission, the more adversity he faces, the stronger he gets. So by going out and not having anything fixed to say, and just sometimes getting blown out and sometimes it goes well, throwing your in- yourself into adversity, facing your fears, challenging yourself, that's where the growth is. That's where the lesson is. Tell me the truth. I think Brazilian women are easier to approach than UK. My friend is from UK and lives in Brazil. He told me UK women are arrogant and not friendly as UK. It's pointless generalizations, Rocky, unfortunately. But um, uh, it depends where you go in Brazil as well. If you go to some suburb in the northeast of Brazil, then women are going to be amazed to see someone who isn't Brazilian. And they're going to maybe imagine that you are some exotic creature of old families. And again, it's illusion, sort of this illusion of grandeur. So I wouldn't really recommend just going to Brazil um, to feel better about that. Um, Brazil is a beautiful place and the women are amazing in many parts of Brazil, really beautiful, friendly women. Um, But I don't really know what's the question. Are they easier to approach? It depends where. In Rio, in Leblon, in many cases, they're harder to approach because they get even more attention and there's loads of tourists and and gringos there already approaching them. In Minas Gerais, they're really, really friendly. But there's, are they easy to approach? And then are they easy to date? And then are they good in relationships? And that is both a cultural thing and a deeply specific thing, an individual to the woman. So there's, it's a loaded question and difficult to answer. But if the question is, shall I go to Brazil and try it? The answer is yes. Next up. Late to the stream, what's this community you're talking about, Sam? I'm new to London. I would be interested in being part of a tribe of men who are into trade going out and approaching. Um, Ermin, if you're still on the stream, then just get in touch with me, right? I put a link to a a cool booking link in the description of every single video. And my email address, admin at fluid.social is also there. I recommend you just book a connect call with me and we can talk about it and get you involved. But essentially, I have a community of guys. The community is called Self Ascending. I put together basically a group of you guys that are all subscribers to the channel who are interested in finding a community of like-minded men who are ambitious, who actually want to meet up in person. That's what's different about it. It's important that we have this physical side. It's a global community, but we've got a lot of guys in London and we're starting to get a lot of guys in Germany, Switzerland and other parts of the world as well, who understand the holistic balance of wealth, health and love. So I'm putting you guys together to train together, martial arts, go to the gym together, to actually think deeply and critically about what your mission and your vision is, to actually analyze your past. And that we've got a psychotherapist involved who does some Jungian archetype work with shadow work to figure out where you're suppressed. Most guys today are suppressing a warrior inside them, which is an old Jungian archetype of a guy who gets shit done, who follows the path, who does his mission. And due to certain childhood experiences and societal changes, a lot of men have suppressed the warrior inside of them. And so they suppress it into the shadow, essentially into the unconscious, which means that they're not able to clearly act and do as they want to. And the suppressed warrior results in certain passive aggressive tendencies and traits. So we go over all of this. There are group seminars, lectures on a weekly basis with me, quarterly meetups in person in different uh, in different areas, and uh, most importantly, accountability to your goals. So we get you to think about your values. What is it, what is it that you value as a man? Courage, resilience, um, uh, com- compassion, um, durability as a person, all of the things that you value. You list out what it is that you value, and we have a mechanism by which you can monitor the actions you're taking on a daily basis and view whether those actions align with your values. And if they don't, you are outside of your ethical codes. And so you feel lazy, confused, and lethargic. If you are in ethics, if you are behaving in a way that corresponds with your core beliefs and core values, then you feel clear, you feel motivated, you feel energized, you feel confident, you feel attractive to women. So we've got all of this, but in a community tribal setting with seminars, lectures, um, training resources, uh, three different video courses so far, and the course is growing. 
So just get in touch and I'll tell you more. Uh, great content as always. Been following you since the Tusk Labs and it's great to see the progression. Thank you, brother. How can I recover from my hiccups? I don't know. <laughs> Are you by any chance in need of a high ticket closer for your products? Bro, reach out to me, Joseph. I love that. I love that you're selling yourself on the live stream. Respect. Drop me a message, man. I'm open to all opportunities. Have you been to Manchester and Newcastle and Liverpool and Birmingham before? Yes, I've been to all of them. Mohammed and uh, I've got coach in, I've got Taz over there in Birmingham. I've got a couple of clients and some guys in the, in the community in Manchester. I don't know. I think we've got one in Birmingham. We've got a couple in Manchester. Uh, the northern cities are usually the best to approach and long-term revenue is the best in these cities. Don't know. When am I coming to Sao Paulo? I'll come to Sao Paulo probably at some point before April, between January and April, but I won't stay long. Do you have a girlfriend or open relationship? No, I had a girlfriend until two months ago and I broke up with her about two months ago. Um, and that's a, a conversation for another stream. But uh, I thought deeply about it and it was a good relationship and she's a good woman and we have a good relationship now. Um, but no, I am completely single as of now. Hey Sam, I was out doing day game yesterday and boyfriend came in to set kind of aggressively. I panicked and ejected. How do you deal with this? You just look him in the eye and say, hey man, um, I apologize. I didn't know this was your girlfriend, but um, congratulations, she's beautiful, right? Just act normally. People don't get aggressive if you are really passive, right? If you're smiling at someone who's in a bad mood and you're just like, hey man, how are you doing? That person snaps out of their aggressive mode and they want to be normal, right? It's a type of hypnotism. Um, where a complete non sequitur energy, someone's really aggressive, and you just say, you know, I was thinking the other day, like, what's the right size for a bedroom to be? That person can't be angry at you because the change in energy shocks them out of their mode. So if you look at the boyfriend and you act like you've done nothing wrong, right? You, you hadn't. You didn't know she had a boyfriend. You had no way of knowing. And now that he's here, you're polite and respectful with him. He would actually look like a dummy for getting aggressive in that situation. And his girlfriend would be like, what are you doing? This guy was just talking to me. He didn't hurt me, right? What are you doing? Why are you so insecure as to think that that requires an aggressive response to someone just speaking with me? Are you stopping me from speaking to people now, right? You have to think about what's gonna go through her mind and how he needs to behave in order to look good in front of her. So if you're polite and respectful, an intelligent guy is gonna be relatively polite and respectful back to you. And then you can eject with, uh, with your pride intact rather than just running away. So just be polite about it. Address the situation. Uh, tell him, yeah, sorry, mate. Didn't know it was your girlfriend, but um, yeah, she looks great. So congratulations. Thank you. Have a nice day. Uh, I've been to Manchester. And did, okay, enough about Manchester. How about a collab with Christian Casanova? I think I reached out to him at some point because I'm, I'm basically open to talking to anyone. Um, I think, as you guys know, I'm not one of those people that thinks that everyone else needs to fail for me to succeed. I actually really support anyone that is doing, well, helping other guys to become stronger from a place of genuine desire to be good rather than just um, desire to, to, to gain validation. There are a lot of people who would call themselves dating coaches who are only doing what they're doing because it makes them feel good about themselves. And they, they haven't evolved to a point where they actually have some sense of value and ethics and actually want to do good. So um, I'm happy to interview everyone and find out whether that's the case. Have you ever coached anyone who just couldn't open? Yes, I have had, um, have I ever had a session with someone? I've had one session in about 2017 with a guy who after an hour, he was just so anxious that he had to go home. But in a three hour session where someone stayed till the end, everyone has approached, every single client has approached. So I've had one guy in, in over a thousand clients who's ran away after an hour, he just couldn't handle it. He was having a, a, a weird moment, we all have them. Um, but it was just wrong place, wrong time. But no, everyone gets going when they get coached by the fluid social cool okay guys uh i think that's it this was meant to be like 10 minutes and it's been 50 minutes so i hope you enjoyed it 
get in contact with me if you want to overcome your biggest sticking point. If you want one-on-one personalized coaching from me, or if you want to join my growing community of guys in London and around the world who are actually interested in cohesively improving each area of their life, the health, wealth, love, with the help of trained professionals in each of those areas, um, and, and basically having your network given to you, the basis of your network and all of the tools that you need to build that network given to you. So, uh, yeah, I appreciate it, guys. Stay true. Keep going.